Keyframing, working with keyframes, is a fundamental skill of video editing. You can do so much with it. Keyframing is very similar regardless of what video editing program that you're using. We're going to look at it today in CapCut for desktop on PC, but the basic concepts are the same regardless of what video editing software you use. So here we are inside CapCut desktop for PC. Now how keyframing works is really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to say we want you to go from this to this over a certain period of time. Well, what's the this to this? In this video here, I have myself in the lower right hand corner and I'm doing a demonstration of something in CapCut. And let's say at this point in the video, there's not a whole lot to show on the screen, but something more I need to talk about. So I wanna go from this tiny little corner to full screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that clip on the timeline. I can tell it's selected because it has the white border around the clip, the other clips do not. And also because I have this handy dandy frame around myself and this clip. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out where I want this to happen. So if I decided it needs to happen somewhere around here, that's where I'm gonna have my playhead is right here. And I'm gonna go over into the properties panel under video basic and I'm going to click this little diamond out by transform and that will add a keyframe and then you'll see this little white diamond appear right there on my clip at that spot on the timeline and so what that's doing it's locking in all the properties here under transform so it's locking in the scale at 25 percent the position and the rotation saying that's what I want it to be here at this spot on the timeline. But then I want to go from this to this. Now we got to put in the this, so I'm just going to move my playhead forward a little bit. I think right there will be good. I still have the clip selected. I want another keyframe here, and at this point, this is where I'm going to make myself be bigger, fill the whole screen. Now in CapCut, if you already have a keyframe on the clip, you don't have to click and add another keyframe. If you make a change to your clip, like so, we make that bigger and you already had a keyframe it will automatically add a new keyframe for you so you can see this new white diamond down here on our timeline and then you can see the change over here in the properties now it didn't create a keyframe for all of the transform properties it just created ones for the things that I changed like the scale so that went to 103 percent where it was at 25 percent and then the position, it keyframed that because I also changed the position to zero, zero, which is centered on the screen. And that'll be just fine because for what we're doing here, we're not changing the rotation. Now let's take a look at what that does. I'm just gonna scrub through. So I'm down there in the bottom and then I zoom up and there I am at the top. I'll play that so you can see what the actual speed is. I've muted it so you don't have to listen to it. That seems a little bit slow to me. If I want that to happen faster, I got two choices. I can either take the ending keyframe back or the beginning keyframe, move it forward. I think we'll just click on this ending keyframe right here. When I click on it, it turns green and I'll drag it really close to the beginning keyframe. If you're zooming in and out on your timeline and working with keyframes, it can look like things are happening really close together, so they're gonna be fast. But if you zoom in a good bit, you see that there's actually quite a bit of space between those two things. So if I want that to happen even faster, I can just drag this back some more, come back and see there. Now I just zipped up. So that's it. This first keyframe here, we said we wanna go from this, which is 25% positioned in the lower right corner to this, which is 100% centered over this period of time, the space between the two keyframes. That's it, that's all there is to keyframes. Pretty simple, totally cool, and lots of things you can do with it. So at some point, I need to go back down to my corner. I'll bring my playhead over to the right a little bit, and let's say this is the spot where I wanna go back down to the 25% and be in this bottom right corner. Now, if I were to just go ahead and and bring this back down to 25% and put it over here in this corner, what would end up happening is it would be going from this spot here, right here at 100%, to this spot where it's at 25% down in the corner, but it would be doing that over this entire span of time, over all these frames. So I'll show you what it does. That's way too long. I don't wanna be that long zooming down. It would also create this sort of Imagine like a, a triangle going up the top of a peak and then back down. I wouldn't be staying at that 100% at all. So if I come back before we get big and play through, see that's not what we wanted. We wanted to start small here, get to full screen here, 
we want it to stay there until about here and then zoom back down to small. So let me go ahead and undo that and put us back before we got that keyframe, which is right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drop a keyframe right here, which will lock in what we've got going on. This 100% or, oh, I think I went to 103. So that'll lock that in. So now it zooms up from 25 to 100%, goes center screen, and then it stays there all the way through here. And if we don't do anything else, well, it's just gonna continue to stay there for the duration of the clip. But what we're gonna do is come over a little bit more here with my playhead on the spot on the timeline over this clip where I want to end up small again I will just grab this image and resize it down to 25% and you can do it using the handles and changing the size of the image on the preview screen or you can come over here and just type in the 25 in the scale or use the scale slider if you want it doesn't matter any way it either way you want to do it it achieves the same thing and then I'll put myself back in this lower right hand corner so let's take a look at how that worked I get bigger, I'm talking, I go back down. Now, obviously I'd probably be at 100% on the center of the screen for much longer than what I was in this little example, but I think you get the point. And you can keep putting keyframes on this clip all the way through if you like. Now, without this clip selected, if I select another clip or if I select nothing on the timeline, you notice my little diamonds down here disappear. Well, don't get excited. They haven't gone anywhere. They just don't show unless you have the clip selected. Now, in some applications, some video editing software, the diamonds will continue to be there, but in CapCut, they only show up when it's selected. What if I want to do two things to the same clip? Like for this clip, I use keyframes to start out in grayscale and start out at this scale 100%. So it's a black and white video and it's at 100%. And then as the video plays, it starts to zoom in toward the character on the right and the color comes in. So let's zoom in on that clip a little bit. The very first keyframe I have selected here, you can tell because it's green. Under transform, the scale is at 100%, position is zero, zero. And if we switch over here to the adjustment tab in the properties panel and look under basic, you'll see that I start off with the saturation for this clip at negative 50 all the way down. So I pulled out all the color. This is what it looked like originally. And I just keyframed, see the little keyframe diamond over here, drag that down as far as it would go so that it's black and white. And then when we get to this keyframe right here, I kept the saturation completely negative. So it's staying in the grayscale. But if we switch back over to video basic and scale, you can see that I've gone from 100% to now 135% at that point. Next keyframe, I've zoomed in a little further. I'm at 166%. And if I switch over to adjustment to see what's going on with the color, well, at this point I'm at zero on the saturation which is the normal baseline starting point for this clip. So the saturation changes from this keyframe right here it goes from negative 70 to this keyframe where it's at zero. This is where the color's coming in starting here going from grayscale here to full color here over that period of time but the zoom is actually a bigger span the zooming starts at the beginning of the video at 100 percent and a position of zero zero and then where it ends is over on this keyframe when it gets to 173 percent and the position changes so the x is at minus a thousand and the y is at minus 750 and these positions x and y x is the horizontal that's going across and Y is the vertical up and down. Negative numbers on the X axis are toward the left and negative numbers on the Y axis are going down. Another excellent use of keyframes is working with text. Yeah, I know you've got plenty of animations, effects, and all that jazz that you can make text do a lot of things, but sometimes the animations and effects just don't do it the way you had in mind. So we're looking at this clip here and I'll play through where the text is. It's just palm trees blowing in the wind and then the there's a airplane that flies through and I've got this text that shows up that says flying high. It's dumb, I know. I didn't know what else to put here. What I want this text to do is I want it to fly in from the left to right. I want it to sit there in the middle and then I want it to fly off to the right. Since we want the text to fly in from the left and go to the middle, we're gonna start with the text off the screen. It can be close, but it does. I don't want it on the screen at all. So I'm gonna start there. 
gonna come over into the properties panel under text and basic, and I'm gonna scroll down until I find position, and right there it is. So we're gonna keyframe the position. So we're gonna say that's where we wanna start. We wanna go from this, and now what do we wanna go to? Well, somewhere around the middle of when this text is on, but a little before. So we'll say right here is where we want it to be in the center. I'm just drag this over into the center, and I'll get a green line there at centered, and you notice CapCut automatically added that keyframe for me because I had already set a keyframe on this clip. So it knows to add a new keyframe when I change the thing that I already keyframed. In this case, it was the position. Now I wanna come out a little bit because like I said, I want it to just sit there before it flies off. So now we will add another keyframe since I'm not changing anything. CapCut doesn't know where to automatically add it. So now I wanna come back over and add a new keyframe on position. And that is gonna be locking it in the same position as it was right here. And now by the end, I want this to be completely off the screen. So we'll go right there. So it's out of view. And CapCut added a keyframe for me there with that position change. So let's go back and see what that does. We want it to appear from the left, coming to the right, stop for a second, and then get on out of our way. Terrific. Text is something that's really fun to play with keyframes because you can do a lot of things with backgrounds and colors and all kinds of stuff. Maybe while it's moving, we also have it the background change color. So let's scroll down over here in the text properties and the color is purple. We need to go back to the beginning so that we lock in that purple. So we'll just click the keyframe next to the color purple for this background. Then we will slide over here to where it's in the center and we're gonna drop down the color. Let's make it, oh, that's bright. We'll go with that. So it automatically added a keyframe for us there because we changed a property that we had already keyframed on that clip. We can have it keep changing colors. So while it's sitting there, we'll go over to this spot here. If we wanna go from this pink at this point, maybe we go this color and notice it automatically added a keyframe for us because we've already keyframed this property on this clip. And then we move our playhead over here to the end. And by the time it gets off screen, we want it to be green. Great. Again, it automatically adds the keyframe. Now let's see what we've done. And voila, we have a very ugly color changing text lower third thing showing up. I'm showing you the mechanics of it, not necessarily the artistry or color choices that you want to be making. You're probably a lot better at that than I am. If you're brand new to keyframes, what I recommend that you do is as you're editing and doing whatever you're doing in your video editor, pay attention to where these little diamonds and these little keyframes show up and just make a mental note. You'll be surprised when there's something you wanna do, it'll click in your head, ooh, hey, I can keyframe that. I bet I could make it do this and do this and flip and rotate and spin and change colors and all these other things. And as you look around, you'll see that these little diamonds show up in a whole lot of places for a whole lot of different properties. Keyframes are really what's behind all the motion graphics and animations and things that we really like. We're taking different elements and we're just identifying at what point we want them to have what property and then change to this property. Those changes can be super fast, super slow. They can have virtually no transition at all, or they can have lots of movement, depending on how close together you put the keyframes. Have fun playing with it. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.